And shalom, everyone. Shalom. I want to welcome everyone to King James Bible University Precept Mastery. I'm Elder Michael Johnson, the pastor over here with King James Bible University and over with the lost sheep of Israel. And we have a pretty interesting teaching we're going to be going through today because now we're going to we're going to do some mechanics based on some um, some things that was brought to me personally um, last week and, and even during the baptism. So what we want to do, we want to make sure that people understand how things work, how things actually moves around in the Bible, because we're dealing with something that is 100 percent alive. And he just sent us a message and we need to know what that message is and how it actually works and how we to apply it in our lives. So we want to do a little bit of house cleaning and making sure that everybody understands what's going on. Now, I will be checking here periodically um, the chat area, but I'm not going to be looking for the chat area for questions, because if you want to ask a question, you want to ask it live, live question, What you can do. You can see down in the description. You can see this now. Please do not come over there to where you can watch the teachings because you're not going to see anything. But you can click on the link down in there where you can ask the live question. You'll come into Zoom. You can ask it there or you can actually use one of the numbers below. And you can call in. And once I see if you have a question, you can uh, put your hand up. And what I would do is take you in and I can find out what your question is to where we can very so we can clearly understand what you're saying. Besides, you know, seeing everything that's going through is a little bit different and um we just want to make sure i oh, want to sit there and see this uh sure things are heating here i'm not sure what that means so i'm not sure what some of this stuff means but the main thing is what i want to do is make sure if you if you don't understand something that i'm teaching come into that chat area come in ask the question we get clarification you can go right back out that's what we're basically doing so it's, it's, this is a more class-based, more than a lecture set setup. So it's more of a class-based where you can ask questions. Please don't put, if you put your question pretty much in the chat, I can almost guarantee you it's not going to get answered because I'm providing an area where you can come in and ask the question. So if you have a question, please come in there. You ask the question and we can do that right there. The link is actually below in there. You can see one of our moderators are already letting you know to 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 do this so it says do not try to watch the lesson so yeah so if you come back there i'm promising you right now you will not see it and see we see some people there right now and matter of fact we got two people back here so i'm not sure if they have questions because you can't see anything i'm not going to allow you to see anything that's back here currently so if you're in here and you're in the back i can guarantee you right now you cannot see anything, but we do have a question based on one thing. And I just want to sit there and find out right now. And I'm going to allow this one to talk and we can hear uh, she on mic. You can unmic and this is sister Larry. If you want to mic, you can unmic right now and we can base it right now based on what you saying. We can see how this actually goes because right now you can't talk. All you got to do is unmic and we can hear you. So we welcome you here to King James Bible University. Sister Larry. Good on, Elder. How you doing? Pretty good. Pretty good. Now, I want to make sure everybody can hear you on the YouTube side. Everybody can hear pretty clear. Just want to check and make sure everybody can hear pretty clear once she spoke. We're trying to wait to see. And yes, everybody's saying yes. Now, before we get started, did you have a question? Yeah, I do have a question. Yeah. <clears throat> Go ahead. Okay. So the question that I have, it deals with um, the mechanics and what you've been going over and the how versus the what to understand. And mm -hmm. so I'm just trying to um, work through that part. So like when we're working through like a blockchain mm -hmm. and we're looking at how something is working versus what is going on and what we need to understand. Okay. Is there a difference between the two different methods yeah. and when we're dealing with a blockchain? Yeah. yeah, it's actually 
yeah, completely different. And um, as you also know, we're going to start doing blockchains only in person. We almost pull them offline, but how things work and how they go through. You actually going to see how I'm, I'm going to be doing some of the um, some of the words here. You're going to see how they actually working. So even within when you build blockchains, because I know, you know, you one of the ones who was in there and you will see pretty much how some things work. So some people might just understand how these words is working, but people who understand blockchain going to understand a whole different way to see how to make sure they can build a blockchain properly. So this is what is going to help you out a great deal. And now I don't know if that answered your complete question or not. So I'm going to wait to see. It would, did that answer your complete question or? It, it almost did. I guess what I want to, what I want to be sure I understand is, you know, when we're working through a parable and we're unraveling a parable, mm -hmm. the, the, what is going to come out of it, right? Understanding the what. Yeah. That's yeah. Going to come out of it. Yeah. Cause what we need to do is know what is there and what, what type, is it an event? Is it a, um, something you need to depart from? Is it something you got need it. to separate from? So we got to find, we got to find that out got and with, within okay. the parable, within the parable, some of the stuff and actually next week, I'm going to be actually tearing down the parable side to where we see it. But, but right now, what we're going to be going through today, we're going to be going through forsake, break and reject, which is actually going to tell you a lot of information right there, but that might end up answering your question. I'm not sure. So. You yeah, more, I you, think it does. It does because it gets to the customs. It does. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. No problem. No problem. And let's see. We we have everybody else is um is not there. So what we're going to do? We're going to get ready to go through this. And now, mainly, as uh, Sister Larry said, a lot of people probably don't understand blockchain, especially people who didn't uh, come there, come to the baptism. So in person, you probably not know what she's talking about because what we did online, we pulling offline where we doing blockchains now only in person. And it's based on reasons, based on people who was, you know, we, what people actually do online. So it's easier for us to do it in person. Now, what we're going to do is do everybody understand, um, functionality. And you can just say yes or no. If you understand functionality, say yes. If you don't, just say no. It's no big deal either way. Cause we're gonna find out what it is. Cause we're gonna we getting ready to dig down into it. So if you understand functionality, yes. If you don't, no. And that's what we're gonna do. And right now, a lot of people saying yes, and some saying no. That's okay. Cool. No problem. That's what we. That's what we want. Good. So we have a lot of no's, which is good. Cause. Those are the ones we need to make sure they understand. I need to make sure I can convert those no's to yes. So that's on me because I got a lot of no's. So we need to be able to convert those no's to yes. So that's what I got to go to work. So I got to put, I got to put in some work because I'm getting way more no's than yes. So I have a lot of work I have to put in. Now, what we're going to do, we're going to look at a couple of things because we got to see under the hood how things work. We got to look at how they work. And if we don't understand how they work, it won't help us. So in the same thing is if you are getting lost anywhere, if you're getting lost anywhere, please use the numbers below or use the link and come in here and ask the question. If not close mouths, don't get fed. Then I'm, then it's impossible for me to help you. But if you come back here, the same thing, I don't want to get into miss uh, confusion you putting it in chat and we don't really understand what you're saying. So it's easy for me to talk with you. So what we're going to do, we're getting ready to crank up and we're going to go through here. So let me start right now. And we're getting ready to look at part of this. So what we're going to do, we're going to look at forsake. And I want everybody who has, make sure you have your pencil paper and make sure we are getting ready to do some, 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 some draw outs. We're getting ready to draw some things out and we want to make sure that everybody understand what is happening. So this is what we have to make sure of. We have to make sure that you understand what is going on. And once we have this, we have forsake. So I want you to draw this and I only want you to put 
just the headings there. So I want you to put forsake. I want you to put cast away, reject or not claim and leave. That's all I want you to do. Don't put in my, my little notes there. I have other notes that I'm going to be doing. Also, I'm going to be, be providing a lot of these notes, which they're going to be provided for people who's actually part of KJBU SharePoint area to where they can go back here and they can get my notes also. So that's no problem. But what we're looking at is forsake. We got to understand what forsake is. So to get down into the nook and cranny, we have to understand how forsake, how it actually works, how it actually moving around in the Bible. That's the catch. So we have to see foundationally how it's walking, how it's walking around. We got it. This is what we're trying to find out. How do forsake walk around in the Bible? How do it walk from Genesis to Revelations forsaking? We don't, we don't know what it means because if it's just a flat word, we, we don't understand what that means. Because now you're getting a carnal understanding. We're not looking for carnal understanding because God is a living God. So we got to understand what he actually means. And it works a couple of ways. One is cast away. Forsake is to cast away something. And you'll see here is to dispose. You see, I'm, I'm putting some notes here to make sure we can understand it. To dispose of something by casting it away whole. It is forsaken. That's what happens. So we're going to look at some doctrine there to find out what's going on. We're, going, we're using Job chapter 34, verse 2, all the way through 16. Because all flesh shall perish and return to the dust, and the, spirit of God, and the spirit shall return to God which who gave it. So we're going to find out that. Then we got to understand another part where we're going to look at it at a second address. But then to understand a lot better, we have to always keep this with us. This is what you have to keep. And this is the middle. This is the foundation on how keep how everything stays together. As is walking. As forsake is walking through the Bible, you keep this in there. It means to reject or not claim. Now, it has spiritual meanings to it, but this is what I want you to foundationally understand as, as how it's walking through. In one, it says, one who forsake their agreement. We got to keep that in mind because that's important in the Bible because the Bible is a legal binding contract between you and the God of Israel. So this is a legal binding contract. And we got to understand that legally based on the covenant that we're making with God. So we can forsake agreements. Keep that in mind. It says they will break and refuse to pay their debts. That Because if you break the agreement, that's one thing that's going to happen. You're going to refuse to pay your debts and it does not acknowledge their entitlement to payments is rebellious. So now this is a rebellious thing because if you forsake an agreement, that makes you a rebellious person. And if you're going to be rebellious, what you're not going to do, you're not going to pay your vow. You're not going to pay your promises. You're not going to pay your covenants. Everybody with me on that? Yes or no? Yes or no? We got that real clear. So that's what's happening here. But this is our basis. This is our basis. So this we keep with us all the time, no matter what, never change. Keep it with us all the time. Never change. Keep it with us all the time. Never change. Good, good, good. So this is the, this is the catch of that. Now, what another part of this is leave, leave and cast away has two different things to it. And we got to look at those. We got to look at that one. And it says we are to forsake all flesh as one forsakes his father and mother. We got to look at that. We got to understand how that, how that's working. Cause it's based on one must forsake. And we got to figure out what's going on there. So let's go to work. Let's roll up our sleeves and go to work. We have to go to work. So let's, let's start this out right now. So the first one we're going to do is cast away to dispose of something, but we got to look at the doctrine of it. The doctrine meaning the teachings of this. We got to look at that. So let's, let's go through here because this will help out a lot more. We're looking at Job chapter 34, but we got to pick it up at verse two. We want to pick it up at verse two here. We got to look at, and now I don't want to, I want to make sure, I don't know why it's not highlighted. Now let me highlight this again. It says, hear my words, O ye wise men, and give ear unto me, ye that have acknowledged. Okay. Now we're looking at this based on the legal binding contract. 
you acknowledge. So now we all acknowledge that we 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 into something. We acknowledge that. But let's go down more. Verse three. And a lot of these words I'm not going to break down, but we could, we got to find out exactly what do cast away mean. We got to know what cast away mean based on this forsaken. So it says, for the ear trieth words, comparing the mouth experience meat. You see that? So it's experiencing some doctrine. That's what we got to keep in mind. So we got that going through, through here. But watch what happens because he's going to start. He's going to, he's, he's telling us a parable, but we got to understand what he's doing. Let us choose to us. Let us choose to us judgment. So now we're going to choose what doctrine and teaching we're going to take hold to. Technically, what is what, what's going on here? It says, let us, <clears throat> let us know among ourselves what is good. Now, before we get anywhere, do we, are we going to let ourselves know what is good based on no experience in the world or what is at the end? Are we going to, we want to think about this. Are we going to know among ourselves what is good? We only can know what's best on what anything based on what our forefathers had told us. Not even on that, just only what your mother, or what your father didn't told you or what your grandfather didn't told you. Think about that. And they, and they haven't experienced everything. So we know that's kind of an issue. That's kind of an issue, but we still on castaway. <clears throat> let's, let's, let's get down. Cause it's going to start making a lot of sense. Cause we looking at the contract. It says for Job have said, I am righteous for Job has said, I am righteous. Think about that including God have taken away my judgment. You seeing what he's saying in one sentence, in one small sentence, Job, a man say I'm righteous and God taken away my judgment. <clears throat> so we see what's going on. We see this is the problem. So right now we should be and came to the analogy, something we need to be getting rid of because this, this is not right. <clears throat> Excuse me. It says, should I lie against my right? My wound is incurable without transgression. You see how he's doing this. Let's go down to verse seven. Cause he's, he's going to, he's going to make this clear for us. It says, what man is like Job? Remember we already taught what Job means. I told you what Job actually mean. That's what you got to remember. So it's telling us what Job who drinketh up scorning like water. He's drinketh up scorning like water. You see how this is this this none of this is going good. None of it. But it's going on and it's going to keep going down. But we have to understand the contract. It says which goeth in company with the workers of iniquity. Did not they all sitting there saying, they, 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 they let us know among ourselves. Did not they say that? They said that back up there in verse four. They said this in verse four. And they wish go off in company. So it says they go off in company ourselves. What is good? <laughs> Which goeth in company with the workers of iniquity and walketh with wicked men. You see the issue? when you just taking out verse four and putting it right below verse eight, we see it's an issue, but we got more because we looking at a contract and we looking at forsaken, but what need to be cast away. <clears throat> he said, he has said it profit a man, nothing that he should delight himself with God. It profit himself, nothing. A man is not going to profit nothing that he should delight himself with God. So now we're going to look at something in verse 10, because it's going to tell you all what was crazy. Cause he's telling us right now for that reason, for that reason, hearken unto me, 
ye men of understanding. Now we need to be of understanding. Because up there was craziness. But the men of understanding are what we're going to do. He's telling you. Is that ye men of understanding be far from it, from be it from God, far be it from God that ye should do wickedness, including from the Almighty that he should commit iniquity. Because he's telling you what, what we need to be doing. And he's going to make sure we, he's clarified on here. For the work of a man shall render unto him. So any type of work you're doing, you're going to render payment for it. No matter what you're doing, you're going to render a payment for it. And he goes on more. So the work of a man should render unto it <clears throat> and cause every man to find according to his way. So whatever our ways are, we are going to get paid for that. No, I don't care what we're doing. We are going to get paid. It's a payment for whatever we're doing. If we're doing wickedness, it's a payment for it. If we're doing righteousness, it's a payment for that. Let's go down more into the contract. Yea, surely God will not do wickedly. So we know this because God cannot lie. So God will not do wickedly. Neither will the Almighty pervert judgment. Just because we do wrong, we can't make our wrongs, then he's going to make them right. Just because he so-called like us or he found so much favor in you. It's not going to happen. He's not going to pervert his judgment. Not for you, not for flesh. It's not going to happen because flesh and blood can inherit the kingdom of God. See, these things you should already know. So if we know flesh and blood can inherit the kingdom of God, then why in the world would he pervert judgment? Because <clears throat> you think, oh, I'm good with God. It's not the truth. Let's go, let's go down through here. Because he's not going to pervert nothing he, he, he done stated. Who have given him charge over the earth? Who have given him charge over the earth? <clears throat> or who have disposed the whole world? <laughs> I'm telling you. It, it, it becomes almost comical. Providing he set in his heart upon man, it he gathered unto himself his spirit, including his breath. So now we're going to find out what's going on. This is why we have to find out what we need to keep, keep from us and what we need to keep. <clears throat> he explains it here. All flesh shall perish together. It's clear. All flesh shall perish together. Telling you the same thing. If it's going to perish together, including man shall turn again to dust. Now he's sitting here and we actually getting a man over here because when you look at Ecclesiastes chapter 12, but verse seven, you see this here because it's already was stated. This has already been stated. And that one went out. I don't know why these <clears throat> so when you look at this it's telling it says then shall the dust return to the earth as it was and the spirit shall return to God who gave it this is exactly what's happening but we see it right here because all flesh is going to perish no matter what it's why it's going to go right back to the dust on what it was and we're going to look at the last verse watch what it says here and watch how he's running this providing providing Thou has understanding, providing thou has understanding. Hear this, hearken to the voice of my words. And we get it. Did we understand it? We have to hearken to the voice of his word. Meaning you have to cast away the the, 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 the advice in everything according to flesh on what he was telling you before. So men going to teach you precepts of men. God is going to teach you the precepts of God. Everybody with that. Cause we have to hearken to the voice It's quicker to listen to the voice of God than to listen to the precepts of men. This is what he's letting you know. We have to put that aside. If we don't, we're going to get caught up. We cannot sit there and understand one thing. And as I said the first time, if we sit there and we push and we sit there and we want to console understanding within ourselves, that's craziness. That's what he's getting into. So we need to hearken to the voice of God. 
That's what he's saying. So when you sit there and you you want to sit there and try to find out anything, and you want to understand anything, the best thing for you to do is to seek understanding from the scriptures. If you're not sharp in the scriptures or sharp with a lot of spiritual understanding, that's what those elders are for. That's what we're here for. That's what the deacons are for. That's what the evangelist is for. Seek that information. <clears throat> and let them give you what God said. Not what they said, what God said. Let's look at another example here. We're going to look at 2 Andrews chapter 5, verse 45. Watch again how this works out. Because we got to cast away things. And he said, and I said, thou hast said unto thy servant that thou which giveth life to all. Thou hast given life at once to a creature that thou hast created, including the creature bear it. Even so, it might know also bear them in no, be, no and now be present in at once. So we we're trying to sit down, trying to figure out what's going on, but he's going to make himself all clear because the same thing when he's telling you to hearken to this voice, this is actually going to tell us the same thing over here. And we're going to see this. And he said to unto me, ask the womb of a woman. So you got to make a comparison. You got to give you a similitude. So we got to sit there, ask the womb of a woman and say unto her, if thou bring it forth children, why doest thou not do it not together? You kind of see what the problem is. You kind of see what's going on here. If you do it the woman, why not do it thou not? That's the question. We 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 get into these things and and really overlook a lot of things. Because he's going to talk about some things that are actually going to put us in a bad position. You're going to see this in one second. Because a lot of times we like to discuss things between ourselves. And it says this, and it makes sure it's clear. It says, and I said, she cannot, which is, that's, that's the truth. But must do it by distance of time. That's the only way she can bring forth children. By distance in time. If you have twins, it's distance in time between the two. So we're sitting there, we're looking at this contract again to see how that understanding works. Then said he unto me, even so, I have given the womb of the earth to those that be sworn in it in their times. Let's let's tear some of this down to, to understand what's going on. Everybody's not going to come into the understanding at one time. It's not going to happen. Just not good. It's not going to happen. Same as he's doing here. And most people are thinking that they can because some people are still going to be wicked. Some people are still going to be a certain way. So they can't be brought in. We're going to see this. We're going to see, understand the same identical thing on what this is talking about. And this is why the problem actually happens. So let's look at the part of this. Then verse 49. Verse 49 is going to say this. And it's pretty clear. It says, for like comparing a young child may bring forth the things that belong to the age. Even so, I have disposed the world which I created. So he already then got rid of the world. The world is already doomed. So this is why few going to come into this new kingdom. This is why he's saying he's literally letting you know this. Few going to come into the kingdom. Because some of us is not going to let go of the world. This is what he's telling us. And he's saying this, but he's telling you from the beginning, we have to cast away things. Actually, let me pull this back up so we can get a better understanding here. You see right here, see, we have to cast away. We have to get rid of, we have to, all flesh shall perish. We know this. So why are you going to try to hold on to flesh? Is this key on what he wants you to really see. You don't try to do that because if you hold on to flesh, you are promised to die. You are promised to be destroyed. So this is, that's the key on what we need to keep, keep, keep our focus on. Now we are looking at that as a whole. So when we get down here, it's, it's, it's telling us exactly what's going on, but let's look at uh second Idris chapter eight, verse one. 
He's telling us right here. It's telling you the same thing and it's not changing. In in second of Jesus chapter eight, verse one, it says, and he answered and said unto me saying, the most high have made this world for many. This world is made for many people, but the world to come for few. Flesh is not invited. Flesh is not part of that. And this is the same comparison on what we see. Actually, we're going to go up a little bit. And this is the same comparison on what we're going to see here. And find out a little bit more information. A little bit more information. We're going to go to 2523. And you'll see, because he's going to give you the comparison. And you see this here. Because he, he said this earlier, but most of us didn't look at that as a whole. Remember, the scriptures can never be broken. So it says, O Lord, that bears rule of every wood of the earth and of all the trees thereof, thou hast chosen thee one only vine. He's telling you, this world was made for many. It's many trees out there, many different species of trees, but he only chose one vine that he's planning on taking over. That's it. And it's hard for some people to take that. People sitting there, oh, no, well, it's all of us as part of it. No, he's not that. He made this world for many, the world to come for few. He's giving you the analogy here. He goes on a little bit more. Of all the lands of the whole world, of all the lands of the whole world, thou hast chosen thee one pit. It's one pit where you're coming. That's why it's a lot of times you guys see my, um, that welcome, you see, She's going and she's digging out of one pit. This is what you see in the silhouette picture for you to understand. It's coming out of one pit. That's it. No other pit. It's only one that's chosen. And of all the flowers thereof, one lily. He's constantly running down these comparisons. Constantly running down comparisons. Because this world was made for many, but the world to come is for few. And he's not going to pervert judgment. He's not going to say, oh, well, I'm going to let you in just because. It's not happening. Just because, oh, no, he's cool. Oh, we're going to tell you, he was a billionaire on that side, so I'm going to bring him in over here. No, that's not happening. This is what's going on here. And we see this in verse 25. Including of all the depths of the sea. Thou hast filled one river, one, 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 one people. And this again, it's hard for hard people to understand and put hard for hard people to see. The reason why, because if he put it into one people, one river, people sit there, but isn't everybody a child of God? No, but people have a problem with that. And they, they say, oh, so then when people teach that, what the doctrine actually says, they say he's a racist, he's, He's a bigot. He's whatever they want to call him. But this is why the Apocrypha was taken out, even though in the, in the Old Testament, it speaks of the same thing. Yahweh Shai or Jesus said the same thing. I'm only came to the house of the Lord, sheep of Israel. He's telling you right up front. He only coming to one people. But people have a problem with this. And he's very, he's very upfront and very direct. So a lot of people, when they get to the end, they, they're going to have a problem. And they're going to sit there and wonder why they, you know, they, they being shocked because they shouldn't be. And it says of all the built cities, thou has hollowed, it separated Zion unto thyself. You can put that to itself. This is why we have to really personally understand scripture and what is in our contract. And it says of all the fowls of the, that are created, thou has named named one dove one not of all the files he she named one and of all the cattle thou hast provided thee one sheep out of everything he just give me one sheep one this is the comparison he's keep running down that this world was made for many you see many different people. You see people creating other nationalities. And it's only the nationality that he created. But they create other nationalities. 
Same as they create other types of fish, they create other types of vegetables, they create all kinds of things. And he said when he finished, what he had created was very good. But now man decided they can they can do it a little bit different. And among all the multitude of people, so now we got all the people. We have blacks and whites and Latinos and and Asians and 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 just, you know, Middle Eastern. We got everything. Everything's there. And of all those multitude of people, thou hast gotten thee one people. It's only one out of that one is chosen. One. One is chosen. And unto this people whom thou lovest, the one who he promised, he giveth them a law that is approved of all of them. This is plain, simple, straight through scripture. But people will have a problem with this because they don't want to sit there. Oh, well, I should be part of it. This is why that, that 12 tribe chart lie you see out there. We're going to get into some of that. This is why those things are out there because they try to bring other people into this. And he's telling you right up front the entire time that he haven't changed anything. And we can't render to ourselves in our own judgment and thinking we can make something work because God is not going to pervert his judgment. He's not going to pervert that. So as we're looking at this, we have to, some people are going to reject some of the things that God said. And that's, that's inevitable. So when we look at this again, it's telling you, see, we re, it says reject or not claim. So some people is going to do this automatically because they're going to, one who forsakes their agreements and they will break and, and refuse to pay their debts. Some is going to do this. So we see when you forsaken something, you have forsaked it. And some people sit there and say, well, if these people, why these people not, why these people not in, why these people not in the covenant, why these people not, okay, why? He already said he's not changing nothing. But the thing is, we got to keep that in there. One who forsakes their agreement. And if we sit there and making an agreement to where we want to be coming into the kingdom and we want to adhere to the, to the voice of God, we have an agreement we got to fulfill. That's to the children of Israel, the children of Jacob. And we have to fulfill that agreement. If we choose not to, then we actually forsake the agreement and we we'll refuse to pay our debts. That means we'll marry outside the line. We'll, we'll sit there and break all our vows. We'll break all our promises in the covenants. We'll, we'll purely do it with, with, no, with no questions asked. Thinking he's, we can adjust this. We can adjust it. And that's not the truth. So people believe that they don't forsake the law or forsake this, the, 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 the covenant of God, and you forsake it. Many people, um, even people, they don't like to talk about it, but the same thing I'm going to share with you. You have a lot of women that, 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 that are the children of Jacob. A lot of women, then what they do, they go outside. You have them where they call it um, divesting, di divesting. They'll go to somebody else and they'll start becoming an incubator for other nations. They, they just forsake the agreement with God. Just forsake it. Some do it knowingly, some doing it unknowingly. The ones doing it unknowingly, they, they don't even have to worry about going into the kingdom. Period. Once you have come to the knowledge of the truth, there remains no more sacrifice, no more established covenants you can have for your sin. Impossible. He is not going to pervert his judgment. So this is the problem most people have. And we, we see one where we see leave. And leave, it says here where I wrote, it says, we are to forsake all flesh as one forsakes his father and mother. We have to forsake flesh. And if we got to forsake flesh, meaning another way, not cast away, but we have to leave. Let's, let's see how this works out. Let's see how this leave works out. And if we're going to leave, we're going to sit there first. We're going to look at, um, we got to look at uh, Genesis. And we're going to see Genesis chapter 2, verse 4. To see how this actually is working out. And... 
Is it 2.4? No, 2.24. I am sorry. 2.24. So man, I know that can't be it. 2.24. <clears throat> after, you see, after he said all what he said, he says, therefore, so for that reason, all what he has said up here, all what he said up here, he said, for that reason shall a man leave. So we got to leave. We have to forsake his father, including his mother and cleave unto his wife and they should be one flesh. But we have to find out why, what is based on why we have to forsake that because it tells you to honor your father and your mother. It tells you to do those things, but we got to understand what that means. Let's, let's look at something. Let's look at something. And we're going to go over here to Matthew. <clears throat> we get some clarity from, from your homicide. We're going to get a little bit of clarity and Matthew chapter 10, but we're going to look at verse 33. Get a little bit of clarity. 33. He says this. He says, but whosoever shall deny me before men, him will I deny before my father, which is in heaven. So Christ is looking at it this way. If you forsake him, you're denying him. If you forsaken Christ, you're denying him. Because he's going to get into what we're talking about. If you don't, so because he's telling you to forsake your father and mother. But he's telling you what you have to do. You have to leave that. You have to leave what's going on. But we're going to find out as he's going through here. And he's telling you right here. He's going to tell you something. He says, think not that I come to send peace on earth. This is what everybody thinks. Oh, he came to give you good news. He came to tell you this. He came to tell you that. He came to... To say, kumbaya, everybody's good. No, he didn't come for that. He said, don't think that I come to send peace on earth. I come, I came not to send peace, but a sword. He came with a sword. He came to separate. But he came to separate the things according to the flesh, according to the things of the spirit. That's what he came to do. He came to separate this. People, we get the token done where we get the circumcision in, in the flesh, but that is nothing but an outside circumcision. We have to be circumcised of the heart. It's clear. It tells us this right here. And he's telling you, he came here to, to do this. But watch what he says. He's going to make it all clear for, for each and every one of us. He says, for I come to set a man a variance. He came to set a variance. Against his father. Against his father. Against his daughter against his, against her mother, including the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. He's not here to play games with flesh, but people get caught up in flesh because they, they got woo-woo over flesh. And he said, you deny me. I'm going to deny you. You forsake me. I'm going to forsake you. clear in scripture you do this I do that he has to because according to the commandments of God he has to walk away you deny him he's not going to sit there and just wait twiddle his thumb wait till you come back you walk away he walks away let's look at this a little bit more a man foes shall be of his own household so your own enemy is going to be within your own household You forsake something, the household don't want to forsake it. Just this past, just this Christmas. People sit there, oh, we will celebrate Christmas, we celebrate Christmas, and you don't forsake it, you're good. But if you forsake it and the household is in the Christmas, now you have to make a choice. He come not to send peace. Oh, well, I'm going to celebrate it this time, but next time I'm not going to no, know. He didn't come for that. He came with a sword to separate you from this. And if you're sitting there and you participate in it, you're denying him. Don't, don't be on Hebrews 10, 26 and you knew. To the best you didn't know. 
But if you knew, you can't establish that covenant with him on, on that again. It's a wrap. And this is what he's holding you to. He's holding each and every one of us to this. A man foe should be of their own household, of your own family. It's going to be of your own family. But he gets better. Verse 37. And he's talking about what you got to forsake. And he says, he that loveth father or mother, as for a man should leave his father and mother, a man should leave his father and mother, he that loveth father and mother, and you don't leave that, more than me is not worthy of me. If you if you love them more than you love him, then you're not worthy of him. You rather hold on to temporary things than eternal things. So you're not worried of the kingdom. It's not it's not rocket science, but a lot of us sit there and thinking I can do this while I'm here and I'm cool with it. And God will God will accept it. That's not the truth. That is nowhere close to truth. If you love father, mother more than me, you're not worthy of me. And he that loves son, daughter more than me is not worthy of me. He's telling you right up front. If you love these more than you love him, well, I'm going to celebrate it or I'm just going to, I'm just going to be there and I'm just, you know, I'm just going to hang out and, you know, I'm just going to be there. But I'm not going to celebrate it. But you're there. Just going to be in the air, you know. If you love them more than you love him, you're not worthy of him. This is why he says, if the righteous going to scarcely make it in, where do you think the sinner is going to show up? He says this in verse 38. <clears throat> he that taketh not, he that taketh not his cross, his suffering unto death, if you're not willing to take up your own suffering and follow after him, it's not worthy of me. He's telling you, then you're not worthy of it. Because people, your own enemies are going to be of your own household. And when be of your own household, they're going to become your enemies. And if, you don't, if you're not willing to take up your own cross, your own suffering unto death, and where people are going to despise you and hate you because you choose not to do something, which it shouldn't be, excuse me, it shouldn't be no big deal. But they're going to make it a big deal. And since you hold on to it, and you go that way, then you're not worthy of the kingdom. This is this is this is clear in scripture. Clear in scripture. We have to understand what's going on every time. We have to remember what is going on all the time. And uh one second, I wanna make sure why it Shouldn't have went out. It was um. It was um. Recording in progress. Let me turn that off. It Recording stopped. It was idle, so it turned off. So the main thing is, if um, <clears throat> if anyone have um any questions. And let me see. Um, I'm trying to see uh, right here. So if you have any questions, please um, come into the um, into the into the Zoom area. You see the link below. You can come and ask your question. I'm gonna give it about a minute or so, and then I'm gonna move forward to the next part of this. So while I'm preparing for that, we got to look at the rest of it. We got to keep looking at the rest of it. So same thing with the forsake. We, we understand this part also. And, and this is breaking covenants. So this break covenants. We have to look at that. Find out how this is actually working. Because <clears throat> when you forsake something, you broke it. You break in the covenant. So it ties to it. This is just another facet of it. But you still broke the covenant. No, I don't care how we look at it, how we, you broke the vow. And I put up here and we can see it right where it's saying. And it's making itself pretty clear. It's making itself pretty clear here. And it tells, it says, one, when one party breaches a covenant with another, 
the breach automatically releases the other party from all its responsibilities and obligations of an agreement promised to or fulfillment. Everybody understand that? This the same thing we're talking about with God. I'm going to say it again, and we're going to look at it, then we're going to look at Scripture to even to, to show you why it's set up this way, why I put that, that caveat there, and the caveat is right with God. It's telling you, if you break a covenant with God, you broke the covenant with God, when one party, say us, when we have breached a covenant with another, meaning with God, the breach automatically releases the other party. It releases God from the responsibilities and obligations of the agreement, promise, or fulfillment. That's what happened. So let's look at this in red because evidently I must have took more emphasis on it. So the same thing is, what I through my findings and through everything else, through the study, is based on the consensus. So based on this consensus reach within the confines of an agreement, consists both commandments, so you understand what, what I'm saying here, and understand commandments and statutes as well as judgments. So these are things within here we have to keep in mind, meaning this. <clears throat> uh, we forsake it. We literally forsake it. So once we forsake it, that's broken. The commandments, the statutes, as well as the judgment, and those responsibilities are broken. The punishments are spelled out. They was already spelled out clearly. We can see in Deuteronomy. Actually, I'm going to show you something in Deuteronomy. Let's, let's look at Deuteronomy. I'll show you something in Deuteronomy. Then we're going to go to the main ones. So let's look at Deuteronomy and just show you then we get to hear some main ones. Because this, this is, it automatically releases him. And most people don't understand, oh, he has to stay with it. No, he don't. Where, 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 where do we get this stuff from? We, we pull up the craziest stuff in the world. In Deuteronomy chapter uh, 28, but I want to show you in verse 1. In the, actually, let's start at verse 15. But then I'm going to jump down there. It says, but it should, it should come to pass, providing thou will not hearken unto the voice. That's the covenant. We have to hearken unto the voice. We chose not to. We chose to break it. We chose to forsake it. So once we did that, of the spirit of thy God to observe, to do all his commandments, based on what I just showed you in, in the red. I just, actually, let me go back to it. I want to make sure you see it. You see it? Based on the consensus reached within the confines of the agreement, consists of both commandments and statutes, as well as judgments, these doctrines and teachings. And it's telling you, if those responsibilities are broken, if those responsibilities are broken, the punishments are spelled out. So now the punishments within this is in there. They, they, they're here. We can't, we can't get around it. We cannot get around this because they, they spelled out. Let's look at it. Now let's look at it. So as it's telling, telling us right here, so it's come to pass. It's come to pass. And we see how this is working when you forsake something. Because it's it's a it's a it's a payment you choosing not to not not the agreement that you choosing not to pay. And but it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Spirit of thy God to observe to do all the commandments, including his statutes, which I command thee this day, all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So now, if you forsake those, he's telling you we see the agreement. We see the agreement. We want all the stuff before 15. We want all the stuff from one down to 14, but we don't want from 15 down. That's, that, that don't make, that don't even make sense. Let's look at something. Let's drop down to verse 21. This is where we will start at, but we're going to go here. It says in the spirit of God should make the pestilence cleave unto thee until thou, until he have consumed thee from off the land, whether thou go possess it. Whether thou go possess it. <clears throat> understand, understand something. I want you to understand what's going on. And, and we're going to see some more. But now, actually, let me show you two. I'm going to show you another one. See this here? 
See this right here. It says, in the spirit of God, shall smite thee with, with a consumption, including fever and inflammation and extreme burning with the sword and with blasting and mildew, and thou shalt pursue thee until thou perish. But most of us takes on something else. Most of us takes on something else. Because what a lot of us do, we take on the doctrines of man, and then man makes, based on his thing, he's based on greed. He's based on greed. Because we're going to forsake him based on greed. Now we get these man-made diseases. I'm going to show you something because I took the time, but I'm going to show it. I'm going to show you something. I'm showing you something here where we're going to look at. Now, to show you here, these are man-made diseases that is in the world today. And there's still more, but I'm just showing you most of them. To where we can see some of them I can't pronounce, some I can. But the main thing here, these are man-made diseases that we're going to be finding out. That you're going to really be shocked on what some of them are. And you see here where you see uh, genetic weapons, what they use, thyroid fever, thyroid fever, Q fever, anthrax. These are man-made diseases that they can come with you. Hemorrhoidic fevers, because fevers, people don't know, fevers can actually kill you faster than anything. See, and they use it for bioterrorism. Spotted fevers, look at this. These are... These are these are man-made diseases, tick-borne viral, and the one that's just been going out, monkeypox. This letting you know this that's a man-made disease. It's not something that's that just came up. That's a man-made disease, monkeypox. But it gets better. It, liver disease. People think, oh, that's normal. No, that's not normal. That's that's a man-made disease. I put that in there twice because anthrax is up there, but that's okay. And you, but you see right here as we're going down in occupational blood disease, cardiac conditions, and work environments. This they cataracts. You know how many people have cataracts? That's a man-made disease. They'll tell you that's natural, but it's not. It's a man-made disease. Actually, I got that in there twice. Occupational disease of, of the voice, vibration sickness. This is all here. All of this is here. And you see, these are man made. You go down, and we're going to go down and look at some of these also. And you can see them. Medication side effects. Most people don't really know what, well, I don't know what that means. Medication side effects. Most of the side effects they put in there. Excessive exposure to medication. They do it. Surgical mistakes. Most of them purpose mistakes. Drug resistant bacteria. Drug resistant viruses. Drug resistance malaria. Did you know that? there it's right there right in front of you and this is what they combat trauma vitamin de deficiencies in diets iodine deficiency disorders tuberculosis most people say no tuberculosis is natural no tuberculosis is man made glaucoma Health effects of tobacco smoking. Preventable child death. Because most of them they do based on tests. Injuries of the brains, liver disease. I put that in there twice. Hemorrhoids. Interesting, isn't it? These things is man-made. In alcohol poisoning. Sleep terror disorders. Gout, gastric ulcers, cluster headaches, 
wormwood intoxication. These are man-made. Man-made diseases. And the main thing is, God even tells you that he made medicines out of the earth. And a wise man would not offer them. So what so so what do that mean? What do that mean for us? Let's look at something. Because if we forsake God, God forsakes us. He's, he's, he's released from those obligations. Let's look at some of this. In, in Leviticus chapter 26, and we'll see this in verse 14. See some of this. Because we need to see how when we forsake something, don't ever think that he is bound by contract to you. It says, but if we, but if ye will not hearken unto me, he's telling you up front. He's, he's trying to really make you understand this. If you do this and you won't hearken unto me, including will not do all these commandments, we, 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 we have a binding covenant. You have to do this. You, you made an agreement. He didn't force you to do anything. But watch what he says here. Including if thou shalt despise, because that's what it is, despise my statutes, or if your soul arbor my judgment. You you arbor his judgment, his doctrines and teaching based on what the world is doing. You don't arbor them based on what he told you what to do. You don't arbor them based on what it was commanded what to do. You arbor them based on what the world is doing and what you want to do because you're lusting for doing the things of the world. Other than that, you wouldn't know. You wouldn't know what was right or what was wrong, but you see the world doing something and you just want to do what the world's doing. And if you offer my judgment that you will not do all my commandments, but ye should break my covenant. Exactly what's the point is. You're going to break it. You mean you're going to forsake it. And once you forsake it, he can forsake you. And he says, I will also... I also will do this unto you. I, even I will appoint over you terror, consumption, and burning age. You, you, you've seen this in Deuteronomy. What are you going to do? Burning age and consume the understanding and cause sorrow of your heart, and ye shall sow your seed in vain, and your enemies shall eat it. Yeah. Let's drop down to verse 23. Let's drop down to verse 23. Got more to it. In providing you were not reformed by me by these things, but walk contrary unto me. See, you got to remember, he's trying to get you to adhere to, to pay your vow. Something that you mut we, he mutually agreed upon. And, but you're going to walk contrary to him. He's telling you right up front. Then I will walk contrary unto you. He's telling you right in front what he has. This is, he's not going to sit there and twiddle his thumbs. How people even tell you the biggest lie. Uh, God, God hates the sin, but loves the sinner. No, that's not the truth. They can't even show you a verse that says that. They can't even show you a verse that says that. This is the problem that we run into. And he says, and I will punish you yet seven times your sins. And he's telling you exactly what's going on. This is why we got shipped out. And I will bring a sword upon you and shall avenge the quarrel of my covenant. Because we sitting there, he's, yeah, I loved you. Wherein have you loved us? Now it's a quarrel over it. Wherein have you loved us? Now, now we play dumb dumb. We play stupid. But we forsake something and we choose not to pay a debt. We choose not to pay a covenant. We choose not to pay a vow. So we forsaked it and we broke it. We broke it. It's a tough thing. And looking at that, the, even more so, when you look at forsake, when you look at forsake, I want you to see something. When you look at forsake, He's saying, which one are you doing? Which one are you doing? Did you leave it or did you cast it away? Which one 
in that category did we do? On based on what he's talking about. Which one did we do? And the main part of this, we cast it away. That's what we did. We cast that to the side as if it's not there. That's what we did. Didn't think nothing more of it. And then most of us think since we can get away with it, we think he, he won't pay attention to it. So this is why we have the issue we have. So he's telling us right here. He said, I will bring a sword upon you and advance the quarrel of my covenant, including I will, and in, in when ye gather together within your cities, I will send pestilence among you and ye shall be delivered into the hand of your enemy. That's why we're here right now. That's why we're here. And now we know what our forefathers was doing because we're here. If they were doing what they were supposed to be doing, we wouldn't be here. It's that, it's that clear and that simple. That clear and that simple. And the same thing is we want to look at verse 27, verse 26. Read for verse 27. So verse 26, it says this, and it says, And when ye have broken... And when I have broken the staff of your bread, of your knowledge, ten women shall bake your bread in one oven, and ye shall deliver your bread again by weight, and ye shall learn and not be satisfied. That's the problem we have today. The agreement was made in the covenant, and it includes specifics. And with the specifics for us to carry out these judgments, which... And main reason why we, we are adhering to these punishments. Why are we receiving them? Regardless of the point on whatever we're doing. This is why we, we having that problem. This is why that problem is happening. And he goes on more here. and Because he, you know, we're not going to be satisfied. <clears throat> and if you were not... <clears throat> If you and if ye will not for all this hearken unto me, but walk contrary unto me, he tells you again, then I will walk contrary unto you also in fury. And I even I will chasten you seven times your sins. He's telling you exactly what he's gonna do. Exactly what's gonna do. So we we sit here and we have the biggest problem on what we're rejecting. This is where it brings us into the main part on what we need to know. Here. Brings us here. We reject knowledge. We reject it. We reject in the covenant. We reject in the understanding of a doctrine that is embedded in the Bible and we choose to reject it. It's here. When you reject, you got, we reject knowledge and we reject doctrines. Everybody understand that? Any questions before we move forward? You're more than welcome to come in the, uh, in the back area and ask a question. I'm going to give it a minute before I move forward. But if you guys understand it, we continually go forward. So just give it a minute and see what happens. And if you can say no but if you don't come in the back and don't say anything, it's nothing I can do right here because I'm not going to take no questions in the front. You can come in the back and, and do it. So the main thing is everybody understanding what's going on. Okay, so now the main problem we have here is when we reject something. This is the problem that we have when we're rejecting something. This is the important part. And in this gets a lot more serious because when you forsake you rejecting when you forsake you rejecting keep that in mind so anytime you say well I'm going to reject this you know, you're actually forsaking something and you're rejecting something you're rejecting either knowledge or you're rejecting doc doctrines 
clear cut and we're going to see how that works. In knowledge, if you reject knowledge, you had a freedom to accept or reject knowledge of doctrines, covenants, and statutes. You clearly had that right up front. We clearly had that choice right up front. In fact, uh, I want to show you something before we move forward into, into this part of it. I'm going to show you something in Leviticus chapter 1, verse 3. Right here. He's telling you, he says, If his offering be of a living sacrifice of the herd, let him offer a male without blemish, without conditions. He should offer it at his own voluntary will. This is at your own voluntary will. At the door of the tabernacle of the congregation before in the presence of the Spirit of God. It's your own voluntary will. And we have to, either we can accept it or reject it. But this is all voluntary. Now, if we reject it, we're going to see a problem here with our set. First Samuel, we're going to see something in First Samuel chapter 8 and verse 7. Chapter 8 and verse 7. Seeing how this all work, when you forsaken something, you, you're doing quite a bit that's in here, that's in the mix of this. And he said, and the spirit of God said unto Samuel, hearken unto the voice of the people. And this is the thing. Remember what we said from the beginning. People will sit there and congregate between themselves and feel they can have communication between themselves. We showed this from the beginning. And he says, hearken to the voice of the people, all that they say unto thee, for they have not rejected thee, but they rejected me. This was right at the beginning, right at the beginning. This was going on because men, as I said in Job, they were sitting there speaking amongst themselves and they taking their own advice and they doing the doctrines and teachings of men on based on what they should do. And they not rejecting men, they rejecting God because the covenant is made with God. Tells you right here. And it's based on the same thing. Let's look at it. We'll see it right in Romans chapter 9 and right at verse 6. Because this is what they rejected. Not as though the word of God is taken out of effect. For they are not all of Israel, which are of Israel. Just because you are of Israel, you can reject it. You can reject that covenant. The same with knowledge, and you'll see Pharaoh did the same thing. We'll see this, and I'm going to take you back to the to the outline. We'll see this in uh, Exodus chapter 7, but we're going to look at verse 16. See this a little breakdown a little bit more. And you'll see how this actually tearing down even better. And it says, Thou shalt say unto him, The Spirit of God of the Hebrews, of the Hebrews, has sent me unto thee, saying, Let my people go that they may serve me in the wilderness and remember here, here, here you too, thou would if not here, because he's not going to pay attention to it, but he's going to harden his heart. Why? Because he's rejecting that knowledge. He have a reason to forsake the knowledge because he's just rejecting it. He don't have a covenant with him, so he's, he's rejecting the knowledge. But let's look at this a little bit closer. Let's look at this closer. So it's showing this on what he did. Pharaoh rejected the knowledge. And he decided not to do what was needed to be done. And when we don't want to look at the reject, we want to keep reject also in our pocket in a way to where we can see how forsake is actually working. So to refuse or say no to someone or something rejecting a request. And that's what God was telling. Hey, let my people go so they can serve me in the wilderness. And he chose not to. No, I'm not doing it. And and you see this as in with Pharaoh. And this is the giver. So now the giver of knowledge, the giver of that knowledge has to reject the person for the lack of knowledge. You see, this is this this is an action causing a reaction. So once he rejected the knowledge, he had to reject him for the lack of knowledge. 
and not that one that offers less than the acts of it. So doctrines are, are future events. That's tell you, doctrines are for future events and works in a providence. So it's for the works in a providence, meaning the kingdom of Yahweh, or it's in the kingdom, but it's mainly talking about the kingdom of Yahweh because this is the point on what he's making it for. But to be rejected is based on knowledge. Always going to be based on knowledge. Let's look at this in 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 um in Hosea chapter uh, chapter four and verse six. He tells you this and make sure that we we all clear on this. This is always forsaken. So when you forsake something, he has to. He has no choice. Four six it tells us right here. It says, for my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee. He has no choice. I will also reject thee. For thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing thou hast forgotten my law and thy, of, of thy God, I will also forget thy children. So he's going to forget our works. He has no choice. So people want to sit there and say, God is an unrighteous God. How is that true? And he's telling us right up front. We have to be able to accept the knowledge that he's, that he's given if we want to inherit the eternal life. But some of us feel, we no, I'm going to do it my way, and then when I get there, just give it to me. That's what we do. In fact, um, let's go over here. We're going to look at a little bit more. In Titus, chapter 3 and verse 8, same place. 3 and verse 8. <laughs> This is one of the problems that, that's real big. It says, this is the faithful saying. This is a faithful saying, including these things I will that thou affirm constantly, that they which have believed in God Almighty be careful to maintain good works. He's telling you, be careful to maintain good works. These things are good and profitable unto men. But he goes on more. He goes on more. Because this is the thing. It says, but avoid foolish questions, including genealogies. Including genealogies. Why is this so important? Because you you, you have guys out there right now. They teach. They say they don't, but they teach based on genealogies. And they even got that wrong. That's why you see that 12 tribe chart out there. And they teaching it based on error in doctrine based on oh where are you from oh my dad from from haiti oh you're from this tribe oh i was born in the united states oh you the tribe of judah avoid foolish questions where are you from that's a foolish question where are your father's from interesting in contentions and in striving about the law, for they are unprofitable in vain. Exactly the point. And it's telling you right up front what they are. It says, a man that is a heretic, after the first and second animation, reject. After the first and second animation. So animation is talking about a warning, a solemn warning or a reproof. Reject them. Reject. Be done with it. But people like to sit there and constantly go back and forth with them. I choose not to because they they just foolish. And we have to understand what we rejecting because we reject in flesh on these doctrines of men. Let's look at a little bit more in this. So these are things I have forsaken. That's why I can walk away from stuff. I've forsaken it and I don't go back. And let's look at Mark. And we're going to go to Mark chapter 7. And pick it up at verse 6. And we see it says, Well, hath Elias prophesied of you hypocrites, as it is written, This people honor me with their lips, and their hearts are far from me. This is, this is all true. People will honor God with their lips, but their hearts is nowhere in it. Lips only. But when it comes to works, it's not there. Why? Because 
they with their lips they one thing, but they already have forsaken God. They forsake God for a piece of bread. Let's look at it a little bit more. Verse seven. It says, "How be it in vain do they worship me, teachings, for doctrines and commandments of men. Teachings, for doctrines and commandments of men. This is what we do." Thinking we have it all. Why? Because these men sit there and came up with some type of analogy of doing something? No. This is craziness. This is 100% craziness. But people will sit there, oh no, I'm going to do it this way, I'm going to do it that way. Doctrines and commandments of men. Even more so, he's telling you right up front. For laying aside the commandments of God. So if you're going to lay aside those, ye hold to traditions. We're going to get into that. We're actually going to get into that. In traditions of men, comparing the washing of pots and cups and many other such like things ye do. We based on traditions. We based on traditions. That's one of the worst things you can do. And that's why we sit there and we flee and we reject the doctrines and we forsake doctrines. And it says, and he said unto him, Full well ye reject the commandments of God, ye may keep your own tradition. So this is our problem. This is this is why, you know, all and I say it, I say it all the time. A lot of us is here, but a lot of us is not going to make it to the kingdom. Why? Because no matter what, we're going to try to switch somewhere in our head, make ourselves think and, and, and make ourselves right to where we can sit there and say we have something going on with God. But let's look at these uh, doctrines because you don't reject doctrines. Doctrines are rejected. And reject doctrines and teachings and covenant of covenant receiving full understanding of agreement according to the deeds in the acts of, of flesh and spirit, accepting the decisions of, of the acts and deeds and flesh, which will result in condemnation, punishment, and damnation. Wow. Why, 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 why do I put it that way? And it's, it's, a, it's, a hard, it's a hard hit. Because once we refuse something, it results automatically. When we forsake a covenant with God, it automatically puts us into condemnation. Automatically. Punishments and condemnation. So I put some things here for reminder scriptures. So this reminder, scriptures cannot be broken. So let's 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 start working through this and we're gonna see some things here. Let's go through some things here. We're going to look at this first one. We're going to see John chapter 3, verse 17. And then we're going to get a little bit deeper on this. John 3, 17, it says this. It says, For Yahweh sent not his son into the, to the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him, through his word, might be saved. He didn't, he didn't come to condemn it. He came to separate you from the works of the flesh. That's what he came to do. But people sit there and and just want to hold on to everything else. This is the problem that people have. This is why we, we want to make sure people really don't understand what's going on. So we want to make sure that people when they when they go through certain things. They know that, oh, I want to go this way, I want to go that way. No. He didn't send people into the world to condemn the world, but that they might be saved through the word that he sent. And to see, it there and see this even more, let's look at verse 18. 
because he's basing it on everything. And this is where the truth is. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already. You see how he, you see how he's putting this. So if you believe on him, it's not condemned. But if you believe not, it's condemned already. So if you already, if you don't believe, you're going to forsake it. It's automatic. You're going to forsake, you're going to reject this doctrine. You're going to forsake those. It doesn't matter. So you're going to reject it. Once you reject it, you forsake it. Once you forsake it, you condemned already. Because he have not believed in the way of the only one willing to serve the servant of God. It's right there. The only begotten son. You're not willing to serve that. So since you're not willing to serve it, you forsake it and you're going to reject the doctrines of it. It's clear. Those are forsake and those why you, once you forsake it, you're going to reject it. You're going to reject that knowledge. So only begotten and begotten one willing to serve. And then that's the servant of God. If you're not willing to serve that, you're not going to believe anything he says, even though you see it in scripture, but you're going to make scripture fit your, 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 your lifestyle. And that's where we screw up at. And we'll see this here in verse 19. It says, and this is the condemnation that, Exactly what's happening. This condemnation. Once we refuse it, this is condemnation that's going to come upon us. Condemnation that the light is come into the world and men promise darkness. Men promise darkness. Can you, are you seeing how serious this is? Christ is saying he, he come into the, he come into the world. This light came into the world and we promise darkness. Rather than light. I'm telling you this. We're not really seeing. <clears throat> we will forsake light. And seek darkness. It's right here. Because their deeds were evil. Our deeds are evil. In fact. Um, let's look at something. And get better. So this word, it came here, and his word came to us. And let's look at that even closer. We'll see this in Wisdom of Solomon. This is one, we go to it quite a bit. It's been coming up in a lot of teaching. We're going to go to 18, verse 15. In thy almighty word, lead thou out of heaven, out of thy royal throne, as a fierce man of war, comparing the fierce man of war to a into a midst of the land of destruction. It's right here. Right here before us. Let's pick up some. So as we sitting there, we seeing this. We're going to see something here. And as this, this word, this message that's come into the world, not to condemn us, but to declare all flesh is guilty. All flesh is guilty. That's what he came to declare. And as we see this, we see what's going on. So now we know two laws are clear in scripture. We have the laws of flesh and we have the laws of God. But people will tell you that's not the truth. And I've been telling you this for a hundred years. It's two laws in the Bible. But people choose not to believe it. And, but we're going to look at those and we're going to see what's going on. And we're going to see what's happening here. So as we sit there and we look at this, we're going to go over here to Romans chapter 7, verse 25. We're going to see part of it here on what he's talking about. He's, he's telling you right out of his own mouth, right out of Paul's mouth. It says, I thank God through salvation of the anointed way or our creator... So that, so then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God. Let's, so let's put this up there. He served the law of God. Write this down. Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 12. He served this. And he served this. Leviticus. 
1918. Uh, let me see, 1918. Kid, no. Okay. So he's telling you right up front. He says, uh, so then with my mind, I serve the law of God, meaning what's being required of God. So now, Israel, what do the spirit of thy God require of thee but to fear the desire of the Lord thy God and walk in all his ways and to promise him and serve him, serve the spirit of thy God with all thy heart and all thy soul. Thou shalt not avenge nor bear a grudge against thy children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. I am the spirit of God. Those two, we, that's what he's saying he's doing. But now we see something else. He says, but, semicolon, but with my flesh, the law of sin, which is found here. You can actually find it in Exodus, but we're going we're gonna to go here where he just lists them, he just lists them out in Galatians chapter 5. These here. Because the flesh is going to serve the law of sin. Which are these? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, barrenness, ill emotions, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envy and murder, drunkenness, rivalries, and such like. These things is not going to inherit the kingdom of God. That's the law of sin. So he's telling us this and why this happened in this way. But the scriptures is clear and it's telling you right up front what is happening. It's telling you it's clear. It's really up front. And as we sit there and see this here, because we reject knowledge. So once you reject knowledge, everything else comes into play. In Romans chapter 3, picking it up at verse 20, he's saying this and make sure we clear again what's happening here. So when we reject, when we reject something, for that reason, by the deeds of the law, it's right over here, deeds of the law according to the flesh, shall no flesh be justified in his sights, for by the law is the knowledge of sin. It's right here. And he have no right to inherit the kingdom of God. It's clear. This is pretty clear. So, same thing when we get a little bit more. We look at Romans chapter 8 and verse 3. Romans 8 and 3. And he's, as he's telling you, he don't want nobody to be lost, but he's saying 8 3 for, for what the law could not do, it was weak, it was weak through the flesh. God sending his own servant in the likeness of sinful flesh including for sin, condemn sin in flesh. Because you don't want nobody to be lost, but some people will. Verse 8. Because he's telling you, so then that they that are in the flesh cannot please God. How can these please God? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness. Can these things please God? No. Not at all. But he's telling you, for the law, but the law of flesh is sin. And he, you see this even here when you're looking at First Timothy. Because everything is starting to click in for what you to see what's going on. These are why he's telling you we have to reject something and we have to reject the flesh. We have to cast it away. We have to reject that. In First Timothy chapter 1, verse 9, knowing this, and, and he's telling you about two laws here. He served the law of God, but with the flesh, he served the law of sin, knowing that the law is not made for a righteous man, but the law is the disobedient for the ungodly, for the sinners, for the unholy, for the profane, for murders of father, murders of mother, for uh, manslayers, for whoremongers, and them that defile themselves with men stealers, for life, for perjured person, if there be any other thing contrary to sound doctrine, for thought, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, ill emotions, wrath, strife, seditions, all these things is there. All of them. 
all. So why would we get in there? Don't make any sense. Same thing, like I said, we can go back to Exodus and go back to chapter 20. He's telling them, watch all these things. He told us what not to do, all what not to do. He says, I am in, a, in Exodus chapter 20, verse 2. He says, I am the spirit of thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no, no other God. You don't do this. Don't do that. I may visit the iniquity upon the father, upon the children, third and fourth generation, them that hate me. He gets on more and thou shalt not take the way of the spirit of God in vain. Don't do that. See how you keep no, 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 no. He constantly does that. Constantly does this. And why they do this? Because what has happened, as I said from the beginning, men has taken this and they've taken the doctrine a whole nother way. And we're going to look at some of that because of some of this stuff I wrote out to where we can look at it. And the same thing is, the law of flesh is taught by the traditions of men. Keep that in mind, and, and that's why I'm showing you 1 Timothy chapter 1, 9 through 11. And you can look at the whole chapter of Exodus. But the teachings are the methodology of apologetics. That's the key. Apologetics. Anybody you see telling you about apologetics is telling you about the traditions of men doctrine. You can't get around it. They can say whatever they want to say. And apologetic, it means the reasonable art, the reason arguments or writings in justification of a of a theory in religious doctrine, in a religious doctrine, in a practice doctrine. That's what apologetics means. Apologetics is it gets into more. It's based on theories and justification and practices of apologetics. The argument of justification. That's what they do. Let's look at this in Mark in chapter 7, verse 5 through 10. Let's look at it and see, see what we're talking about. But most men, they'll sit there and they'll say they don't do this. But I promise you, all you got to do is talk to them. And I promise you, apologetics doctrine is going to come out. Not within 15 minutes. As soon as they start talking, it is going to come out. In um, Mark chapter 7, let's look at verse 5. And let's look at this. Because this is what they technically are. They're Pharisees. And when the Pharisees and scribes ask him, why walk, thy, why walk not thy disciples according to the traditions of the elders, but eat bread with unwashing hands? Why you don't do what these men do? Why you don't do the traditions of the elders? Apologetics. They have the argument. They have a valid argument they want to push up. And he answered, well, Elias prophesied unto you hypocrites. So he prophesied unto you hypocrites. As it is written, this people honor me with their lips, but their hearts is far from me. And this is the problem where you don't see apologetics nowhere in scripture. Nowhere. But they're going to use it. How be it? How be it they, they worship me they, how be it in vain do they worship me? Teachings for doctrines and commandments of men. This is what they do. This is what they do. They're good at doing it. And they get a lot of people doing it. In fact, then it says, For laying aside the commandments of God, ye hold to the traditions of men, as washing the pots and cups and many other such like things ye do, including... Full well ye reject. You see right there? They reject the commandments of God. They reject this. And they want to use the doctors of apologetics. The doctors of men. And they reject the commandments of God that you may keep your own traditions. And that's why it says here, right where it makes it clear in verse 10. And Moses said, Honor thy father and mother, and whosoever curses mother and father, let him die to death. This is why he's saying this. But better yet, let's go to Malachi chapter 1 and see, see what's going on there. Malachi chapter 1 and 
find out. Malachi chapter 1 and verse 6. What we doing, we doing it again. And he's telling us right here. Because we got to remember what we are supposed to be obedient to, to the voice of God. A son honored his father and a servant his master. If then I, the, 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 uh, the spirit of God, Jehovah, be a father, where is my honor? If I be a master, he be a teacher, where is his fear? Said the spirit of God of hosts unto you. O priest, that ye despise my way, and ye say, wherein have I despised your name? You, you, see, you see how we get into this? But this is what they do. This is where the problem becomes. This is why it's so important to always, what I tell you, it's important who you watch who you learn from. But people, you feel you learn from whoever you want. But the main thing is, the proof going to always be in the pudding at the end. And we'll see this here, and it says, here where I put it here, it says the method used. One of the methods used on how you will know this automatically, that they use in apologetics. They're going to they're gonna use some of these famous words, exegesis. Exegesis. Can't find in scripture as well as apologetic. But exegesis is a critical explanation of interpreting Bible texts. This is by man's traditions to apply this method by interpreting Bible texts. That's what they use it for. Exegesis. They say, we're going to have you exegete the scriptures. That's what they do. And that's how they, they develop the argument. Using apologetics. The other one, the other key one that you pay attention to is hermeneutics. And the hermeneutics is a theory and a method that is used to justify the traditions of man's understanding. When it is used for interpretation, it details the idea of systematically applying meaning from text, objects, concepts, as well as collection of various methods and techniques used to achieve the, uh, this goal in ancient times in Jerusalem, Mesopotamia, in, uh, in our cultures during that time, which is 100% craziness. All interpretation based on a theory. They can't even argue this. They can't even, they can't even argue. Are they going to say, well, no, we apologize. No, he's, or, or they'll just say he's lying. Where's he lying? That's all you have to say. Where is he? Show me where he lied at. Show me in detail. Break it down where he lied at. Because hermeneutics tells you that it's a theory and it's a methodology that is justified to tradition and understandings for an interpretation. So I'm not lying. But they would tell you I'm a liar. Or better yet, they're going to sit there and just throw rocks at me. Which doesn't matter. And then the same thing with exegesis. This lets you know apologetics is what it is. It's a tradition of men. And we got to remember this as what we're going to do, because it's telling you right up front that scriptures cannot be broken. Even seen in Psalms, we're going to go through these and make sure that we know. So let's look at this all together. And we're going to see this here. So now let's look at this in Psalms 89, 34. We want to make sure why things can, can't go a certain way. Psalms 89, verse 34. We want to look at this better to understand why we have to sit there and we reject doctrines of men. It says, my covenant will I not break. So we know that God is not going to break his covenant. Men will. Men will, but God is not. God is not going to break his covenant nor alter the thing that's going out of his lips. He's not breaking that. He's not altering nothing. So if he's not doing neither one, then we in a better position all the time because we know up front within our contract, we know what we need to be, be agreeing to. He said this also in Hebrews 13, 8. We see that there. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8. And we're going to see it spiritually because it says it even better way spiritually. And it says, for salvation of the anointed way is the same today, same yesterday, and today and forever. That's what it's actually saying. Salvation of the anointed way, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Right here. And based on the same thing, that word that came down, because that word that came down it never changed in 1815. The same thing what we were just looking at. The almighty word leaped down out of heaven, out of that royal throne, as a fierce man of war into the land in the midst of destruction. 
for salvation of the anointed way. The same yesterday, today, and forever. And what did he come to do? We will see this over here in Ezekiel. In Ezekiel, it tells us that he makes this perfectly clear to each and every one of us. Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 17, he's telling us right up front exactly what he came for us to do. He says, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore, for that reason, hear the words at my hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. That's what we're supposed to be doing. That's what we're supposed to be doing. So we know these scriptures cannot be broken. So at no time we should be pumping ourselves and hey, we need the money for this, we need money for that, we need you to be doing this, we need you to be doing that. That don't make any sense because that's not used for the kingdom of God. We need to be given warning. So what's one of the other problems is, is what we got to look at the second part here. So this is why so many people is actually going to be expelled out of Scripture. And that's why it says, and Satan was cast out with all his messengers. This is one of the reasons why. We're going to see that right here. And we see this part here on this part because this was rejected. This was rejected. Rejected. Refused by someone or something. And they rejected this. We're going to see what they rejected. And it's telling us right here. It says, making the scriptures clear for people to do the following. And we have Deuteronomy 4.2, which we already know it says, but we're going to go there and look at it. But it's talking about what you don't remove and what you don't add to it. Which you'll see many today uses 66 books of the Bible when it's 81. Most people think it's 80, but it's actually 81. And... That's what most people don't even know what the, 80, the, the one is, but that's okay. And, and, and we'll all, all will be held accountable for that. But let's look at it. Let's go to Deuteronomy and we're going to see this. Let's look at it. In Deuteronomy, and find this in Deuteronomy chapter 4, verse 2. And this is clear. Ye shall not add to the word which I command you, neither shall you diminish from out, diminish out from it. So you don't add nothing, you don't take from it. And you had men who sitting there telling you they done, they done looked at the Bible and they done studied it and they done sit there and they done did all these things and now the Bible got all these wrong things. Actually, I can even show you the video. One second, I'll show you the video because you actually do it. I still got it on here. One second. This is the 100th anniversary edition. The Holy Bible, the 1611 King James Version. And the people whom we are debating wanted to base much of what we say and teach on the King James Version bearing the Apocrypha books as being inspired of God just as the 66 books of the Bible. I want to just say something about this. I went through it very carefully. And interestingly, the Apocrypha is in the Bible, but it's not of the Bible. It's in the Bible, but it's not of the Bible. Now, you, you see right here, you, you clearly see right there what, what, what he's telling you, to where he can pull you away from doctrine. And then these people sit there, well, he just teaching in there, but you got to be, no, 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 because we're going to see the second part of this. That's why I want you to see Revelation chapter 8, chapter 22, verse 18 and 19. This is why I want you to see that. And then why I'm actually glad I still had it up, to where I can show you what's in here. And it's telling you, it says, for I testify unto every man, not to some man, to every man that hear the word of the prophecy in th of this book. Providing any man shall add unto these things, God shall also, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. 
It's right here. But he gets um, he gets even better. And this is right at the right at the end, verse nineteen. If any man should take away from the words of this book, and they took out the entire apocrypha, what he was saying is of the Bible. It's not of the Bible. He said it's in the Bible, but it's not of the Bible. So he want to remove it. And it's bearing the same prophet that is in the Old Testament. And if any man take away the words of this book, of this prophet, God should take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. So the main part is why in the world people will sit there and, and, and hold to this, this thing because they see it there and he's, and he's just holding on to an audiology. He said he went through it very carefully. Again, he's sitting there holding to an ideology, which is pure ignorance. Pure ignorance. So we see this and, and this goes on. And as it says, it, you see it? He will be held accountable for what he's doing. He is going to be held accountable for that. And then it says, making anyone that 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 uh that do not believe God's word in the directions cannot be saved because you're really condemned, declared guilty. Yeah, you already condemned already. That condemnation, punishment, and curses. So this is what happens when it goes on this way. So we want to see that there. And this is Second Thessalonians. We're going to look at that. In Second Thessalonians, we're going to look at two places and make sure we understand what's going on. Let me um, get to Second Thessalonians. We're going to see things that's happening because we want to understand when you reject something and you forsake it. You, he's you holding yourself to a whole nother level of things, and you see right here we we gonna run this in Second Thessalonians chapter two. We're gonna look at verse seven. For the mystery of iniquity doeth already the work. Only he that now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. Exactly until he he who he teach to and him himself. If you let it happen, you gonna let it happen until you taken out the way. This is clear. And it tells you even more so. It says, Then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Creator shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Even him who's coming after the workings of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders. He's telling you exactly what he's doing. And with all deceivableness and unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, not the promise of the truth. It was taken out. You can't, you can't, how are you going to understand a full book and you done took stuff out? You can't understand the promise of the truth. That they might be saved. You, Cause you don't know. And it tell you in that cause, God should send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. So this is why so many people believe that that lie that that man's putting out. This is why so many people believe this, and that they, they might be damned who believe not the love of the truth, but have pleasure in unrighteousness. And this is why they're being held to those standards and don't know why. The same thing you see right here, and they sitting there and they don't think that God to do these things, but we'll find this in Second Chronicles, and we're gonna find out something. Second Chronicles chapter. 18 verse 22 and people sit there and they really don't understand how God works and it says for that reason for that reason remember the spirit of God had put a lion spirit in the mouth of all these thy prophets and the spirit of God has spoken evil against thee this is what he's going to do this is clear in scripture but people will have a problem when you're rejecting something. We want to understand what reject means and forsaken. And we look at this more so and we find out this here. And you find out mixing exegesis, hermeneutics, apologetics with precepts. This is another problem we come to. Meaning, meaning this, when you're mixing exegesis, hermeneutics, apologetics with precepts, this is mainly common with what you're seeing camp doctrine. This is what they do. They mix 
hermeneutics with a, with 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 with, with uh, exegesis, with apologetics, with precepts, and they think they're doing something, but it makes them it makes their 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 user or teacher bastards, and not servants of God. But it makes them actual bastards because they mix in doctrine. Because we got to remember what the foundation is and never forget it. The foundation is found here. The foundation never changes. As he said, my covenant will I not break nor alter the thing that's going out of my lips. So if he's nothing going out of his lips, he's giving you the instructions here in Isaiah chapter 28, verse 10. It's here. For precept must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. That's what's going on. So this is not based on that, but then when people sit there and they mix doctrines and they must do precept upon precept, becomes a problem. And let's go, let's go back over to the document that I have. And so now we understand that the foundation of precept must be upon precept, not based upon interpretation, but the knowledge of understanding that what God said. For those who speak a different language and practice different cultures will he switch to a theology that is easier for folks to swallow. Giving their ignorance a genuine rest, it's no surprise that God predicted this would be what the people will put in there, what people will put their faith in. In this, in this way, such teachings is invulgarating. It really is. Really invulgarating. And but they refuse to listen to reality even said this. So God even said this. And we want to go and we want to look at what he's talking about. We want to look at this in his fullness. And we're going to go over here to, we're going to drop down to verse 11. And he's telling us right up front. It says, for with a stimmering lips, another tongue will I speak to this people. So I have it over here and I'm going to show you to and We're going to go back to it to where you see it. But the, the Spirit of God was upon them, was precept upon precept. But their ignorance, their, the people ignorance, precept upon precept, you're going to fall backwards. Because you're ignorant. You, you, you mix in doctrines. But he's going to tell you this with another tongue. It says, you see it right here. It's going to be right, real clear in one second. It says, to whom he said, this is the rest wherewith ye may cause the worry to rest. What? Teaching these soft little 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 kitten type doctrines. And it is refreshing that you would not hear. Because now you don't have to hear it because they sitting there you saved anyway. Once saved, always saved. They can teach you any kind of doctrine you you'll buy it. But it's telling you right here, but they but you still gonna fall backwards. No matter what, because it's telling you right here. It says but the word of the Spirit of God was upon them for precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little, there a little, that they might fall backwards. Exactly the point. That they might fall backwards and be broken in a, in a snare and be taken. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 11 and 12. It's exactly what he's talking about. Because they want to mix these doctrines. The Spirit of God in and what they're doing. And when they mix them, it makes them nothing more than being bastards. Nothing more than being a bastard. We see it a similar to it, and you see it in today, where you see people out there in mixed, in mixed nations, and they're out there saying they're teaching the Word of God. And they bastards teach out there teaching a, a false doctrine. Let's look at something. Let's look at something. And we'll go over here to Deuteronomy. As we shutting down, we're going to go to Deuteronomy. Let's look at something. Deuteronomy chapter 23, in verse 2. My covenant will I not break nor alter the thing that's going on in my lips. And a bastard shall not enter into the congregation of the Spirit of God, even into the tenth generation shall he not enter into the congregation of the Spirit of God. Doesn't matter. A bastard will never come into there, ever. interesting the reason this is so interesting because we have people who will go out and then some of these go out without the, 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 the issues and then they sit there and they think that they, they're having the covering and you even see bastards out there teaching 
straight teaching. Who, whose father is one nation and their mother is another nation. They teach. But they're still bastards. And they don't supposed to teach. The reason why, the same thing, if your father is, 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 is a Hebrew and your mother is of another nation, you're still based on your father. But do you teach? No, you still don't teach. Why? Because you're going to still sit there and be partial to your mother. You're still going to be partial to those people. So you can't teach. Part of Israel? Yeah, based on your father. Can you teach? No. Because you're going to be partial. In his covenant will he not break nor alter what is going out of his lips, and you will alter it. So he can't allow you to teach. And we got people in the camps all over the place. They mix nations and they teach all kinds of craziness. But let's look at this in Hebrews chapter 13. Hebrews chapter 12, I'm sorry. Chapter 12, verse 8. He's telling you, but if ye be without chastement, whereof are, whereof all are partakers, ye are bastards and not sons. Ye are bastards and not sons. But we'll create our own doctrines. See, because most people thinking they they doing something and they really not. But as I said before, we create our own demise. Actually, we need to go here. And the same thing, like I said before, as I said before, we're going to look at um, Sirach chapter 38. And I said this a little bit earlier. And I want to just go back to where I can revisit this. And it says, and the Lord created medicines out of the earth, including he that is wise will not arbor them. This is interesting. The reason why this is so interesting because they the ones create these nuclear weapons. They create the nuclear weapons. It tells you right here. They create nuclear weapons that can destroy life massively. To destroy the earth. Including man-made diseases. Just show them to you. Just show them to you. So with that, hopefully people can understand a little bit more on what we were doing in understanding the mechanics to understand really when you sit there and you're rejecting and you really are forsaking something, how it actually works. How it works. If you have any questions, I'll give you guys a minute to where you can come back if you have a question. We can take care of it right now. If not, I'm going to be closing out in a couple of minutes. But I do want you guys to understand, when you sit there and you don't understand, when you reject, you're forsaking something. And if you're forsaking the covenant, based on something he already said, it puts you in a lot more problems. This is why it says I need four precepts in six lines here. A little there, and that should do it. Because we want to understand exactly what God is saying. And let me see, I have, um, and we have Sister Lockie. You can unmike and you have a question? Hello? Hello? I'm going to try one more time. Hello? Okay. I guess you cannot come through, so I'm going to have to take that out. Okay, I'm getting music on your end. I'm going to have to switch this over if you can't switch that out. Hello? Okay. Let me let me dis let me disable that. 
Okay. So, so the main thing is, as long as everybody understands what's going on, hopefully that you, um, you continue, you guys, you guys continually move forward, but making sure you understand what was being said there. And let me see, I have another one. We have a Sister Chappelle. Did you have a question? Uh, no, Elder, I did not. Oh. Okay. Oh. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay, so I thought some people had questions, and that was the main thing for it. So, so what we're going to do, we're going to end it here, and just making sure people can understand what was going on with this. So, I say until next time, I say to each and every person, until then, I say to, to you, you guys be safe out there. A lot of crazy stuff is going on, so be safe out there. So until next time, shalom. Thank you.